so they already know the area very well. It's also a Brownfields area. So basically what I've been doing is just basically trying to push the city, and the city's been, you know, to a certain extent working with me. But again, I'm the only city worker here, and they sent one three weeks later. A lot of the things that we, you know, kind of got here with the heater, the boiler getting fixed was through uh, another company coming in, and it took about an hour and a half to fix it, so we got some heat up and uh, hot water. We have a hot shower truck outside, so uh, that, that's basically it. We've been trying to just make sure the kids don't get hurt, please. Thank you. So we've been, uh, I get on my bullhorn usually, and I yell out to the community, it's hot food, comida caliente. I've been learning a little Spanish so I can communicate with everybody that's here. Hot food, again, there's, this is the largest uh, outlet of children in after school. For, uh, after school, all of the buses come here. It's more people in each dwelling here than any other part of the community. There's 35,000 people in Long Beach. Usually at 3.30, 4 o'clock, there's hundreds of children in this community. Some of them are still going back into mole infested apart uh, apartments and things like that. Uh, one, whether the landlord did the work or not, or I don't know whose fault it is. We did 215, which you guys should have a critical report on that. Uh, we went there and saw that the children was absolutely freezing. It's seven floors, 95% uh, uh, Hispanic, some documented, some undocumented. I didn't get all into who documented. I'm not, you know, that, that's me. I'm trying to see if you need some food and I'm going to you. So uh, that's what we tried to do. And if they needed FEMA, we came back and let Team 11 know. What team is this? We're not actually a team. We're okay. From, okay. The, from the main office. Okay, from the main office. Yeah. So yeah. Team 58 and Team 11 and Team 13, you know, all of the teams that have come through, we've been trying to work with all of them to get whoever needed to go in certain areas, you know, letting you guys know. And uh, like I said, I haven't, I work for the city, but I haven't done a timesheet or anything since a month ago, so I don't, you know, I've just been going, going and going and going. My feet actually feel a little numb now, because I just stand and I go. And what gives me that grace is God, because I believe that, you know, if I wasn't doing what I would be doing, I don't think the community would have. So that's why I push myself to go night and day, night and day, and I've been working with Martin and Pat and the whole crew, and uh, they've been awesome. They've been, you know, someone came in here talking a little bit about FEMA, and we kind of, Threw them out because FEMA and Long Beach have been working. This team has been working very diligently with us to go to every area that we needed. But this area, you know, you can get the reports from them. You know, they, you know, I don't have to speak about it. They know. I, I mean, I didn't even do my FEMA paperwork because I wasn't concerned necessarily about me, even though I live right next door. And water came up to my house. But this young man here actually forced me to. He forced me to do my own FEMA paperwork after three weeks, and uh, I, I truly didn't care about myself. But uh, they've been on top of everything, and uh, some of the buildings that uh, are uh, senior housing, which they've uh, been on, that it's just sad to know people have been trapped in their houses since the storm, in wheelchairs and all of those different things. and. Uh, so all I can do is think about my grandmother and grandfather, if they was alive, how would they feel not being able to go to the doctors or people not seeing them? So we went to them and we bought them whatever we get here, we bring to them. And we go all over Long Beach doing what we got to do. We're doing like a need assessment right now, knocking on doors. You know, the city probably closes this down right now. I think they could, but I don't think they want to do that. You know, we want to be too nice in the community. And uh, to work with the community, we're trying to work totally together. You know, we know we have to expedite the fixture of this building, but if this building can only get a few people in it and it's servicing hundreds, what's more important, the hundreds or a few people playing basketball or a few people really having leisure time? That's why I'm the chairperson of the non-for-profit that operates upstairs. But the city runs a child care here, so it is important, you know, uh, but what we're doing right now, I think, is uh, very important also. Thank and you. it's an emergency need. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
thank God for, you know, some people that have given some donations because some volunteers are wonderful, but people need to be able to pay their bills and stuff too. You know, I've actually taken some of my personal money. I'm just a city worker. Taking some of my personal money to help pay for food and do different things because, again, people, if you stay here for 10 minutes, I don't know what time it is now, but you'll see a bus rolling up. And uh, what time is it, Jonah? Okay, well, soon there'll be a bus pulling up and there's going to be some kids looking for some hot food, you know, and uh, we don't ask them what color they are. We just ask them if their belly is hungry and they come in and get something to eat. And that's what we do, you know. Although some other people may have some different things that they do, we love everybody and we're just trying to service uh, the community. So uh, the, team, the team's here. Definitely. Yeah, keep rolling. All of this is donated by different individuals. We've contacted people and we've talked to different people, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's uh, this is. See, this is uh, this is not a site that actually is on any website. That is not. You know, you won't see this on the city's website. MLK has a site. They've actually closed their site now. And uh, so every donation that came here, a lot of it came from that site because we requested and went over there and, you know, the city gave us a site. But some people just stumbled upon us. And uh, some people heard the need and the cry and they came. There's some people that come from upstate, some people that are coming from all over. And National Grid, I hang their banners high. FEMA had a banner, I hang their banner too because FEMA workers have actually helped us carry things in, helped families out, they, you know, along outside of their duties to do the paperwork, they have been a part of, you know, I mean, the, the, the you know, these three and a few more have actually been, uh, you know, been able to help communicate as far as the bilingual and, and uh, truly amazing. Like I said, I, maybe one day I will speak to Obama. I'm gonna talk about Team 11. What team are you guys? Team, team, team Fiend. Fiend. Whatever team you're on. Team of FEMA. I know I'll remember the names. Even if you're not a team, you you're part of the MLK team and the Help team. So you well, know. Well, that's strike what team. It takes. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 is everybody working together? Everybody working together. That's that's what it's been. We all have to respond to the emergency. It's what the that's emails good. do. And FEMA workers have taken off their jacket and got to work, and uh, it, it, it truly has been a community need. You know, a lot of people may be at work right now, but there's still a lot of help that's needed, and I know a lot of people want to display a uh, look of normalcy and everything's fine. It's not. There's people still hungry. We have a few videos from today where there were seniors crying, happy that we stopped by when no one has stopped by, where they've been on the seventh floor. You don't have to listen to me. The you videos. can ask the other team members of FEMA. <laughs> yeah, the they've walked up those yeah. stairs, mm -hmm. and those stairs are pretty steep and pretty rough. And dark. So, yeah, and some of those people are not walking out, and they won't even begin to try. We'll, we'll take them by there. And of course, uh, 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 by now, they've restored most of the electricity, and they've done you know, a lot of restoration work. But we'll take you there so you can see uh, where the water impacted on the electrical, the, uh, the elevators are not available still. But just so you can imagine what it'd be like going up those stairwells when it was completely dark for two weeks, almost three weeks. Well, actually it was four weeks before they got electrical. And um, these folks, we're up on the sixth and seventh floor, and they had to walk down daily to try to get food. And some of them couldn't walk because of the situation they were in. So you'll get to see some of that. There's some other areas where they had to gut stuff completely out because of the salt water. And uh, thanks to places like this uh, that they trust in the community, and they come to uh, get information as well as as you can Thank see, you. Uh, uh, the distribution of, of food and, and necessities. So, you know, we, we've worked with them, and, and behind that, it helps FEMA get the word to these folks that normally wouldn't come out. Because there's a little bit of mistrust with government, you know, and uh, they trust this place, and that's how we will be able to uh, really be effective.